Hey YouTube, this is Andy, aka Sonic Gento, and I'm creating this video that is a response to a video that is a response to a video. Uh, the first one was The Atheist, and you know, this response, I, I had to create something because there is a lot of fallacies and misinterpretations that I had set straight. I could not let it stand the way it was. To mention that arguably the greatest genocide ever perpetrated was done by a Christian nation, by an army who had sworn a Christian oath of allegiance. Now it would appear that the angel of Christian fantasy has only read about the atrocities not committed in the name of the Christian God. Okay, the first assertion made in this video is that Nazi Germany was somehow a Christian country, and this is obviously. 100% false. Um, well, m yes, many of the German people still did practice Christianity. The government in no way reflected uh, true Christian idealism. Um, in fact, the government actually used Christian symbolism as well with some of uh, Germany's uh, ancient uh, pagan uh, imagery. They even used some Roman symbolism as well in there and created their own form of religion. Even by the end of the, uh, it actually it was around halfway through the uh, Nazi regime, they started banning Bibles from churches, and uh, they required there to be a book of Hitler's Mein Kampf on the altar, as well as a, a sword. And um, pretty obvious this was not a Christian-friendly uh, government. And in no way, practice Christian principles. Simply the absence of good. It's not something present, it's something missing, a privation. Just like this donut hole, it's missing from the center. Evil is the absence of good? Well, by this logic, the universe is evil. The universe is neither good nor bad, it's inanimate. So by the angel's reasoning, this makes the universe of God's creation absent of good, and therefore, evil. Okay, moving on to your next argument, you say, according to the angel in this video, the universe is bad. You're taking the statement way too literally, and not quite understanding to what it pertains. He's aiming it at, ah, uh, man, humans. You know, not not trees, not not a rock, or in your example, the universe. He's talking about humans, and it's pretty obvious that humans have the capacity to do right and wrong. Only desire free creatures. Fail. Freedom and society are mutually exclusive terms. If you wish to become a member of society, you must give up some freedom. The relationship is intrinsic. Eloquently summarized as justice as a price, the price is freedom. Okay. Um, and your next example is free will. And you really seem to be stretching here. Uh, freedom, in the sense, is what he's talking about, is what we decide to do and think as an individual. Sure, laws have been passed restricting our actions, you know, to create better societies. But the fact is that people can break these laws, and that's self-evident, and proves your argument here completely wrong. Uh, so sin is antisocial behavior. An individual who chooses to live in a society, gaining the benefit from living in that society, but not to obey the constraints on freedom that that society imposes. Okay, moving on, we have your description of sin next, and it's pretty counterintuitive. Sin is pretty basic. It's doing something your way instead of God's way. There's three basic categories. All sin falls into sins of the flesh, of greed, and of pride. So, let's summarize. God strips someone naked, shaves them, gives them a gun, takes him to a drunk driver who killed his wife in a dark alley, and then when the atheist refuses to kill him, goads him into killing him, and then blames him for being evil. 
uh, yeah. I don't completely understand why the filmmaker decided to do the film this way. However, you just need to understand what he's trying to say. And it's basically, man will fail. We will choose our way over God's way. The angel now somehow lumps together murder, fornication, theft, false witness, and blasphemy as all evils of the heart. Oh dear. Some intrinsic limitations of civilization. Firstly, if you kill one person before childbearing age, your civilization is doomed. Low murder rates are a requirement for any society. Huh? All that's required is more births than deaths, which is intrinsic upon every population on the planet. Secondly, a society without fornication is doomed after the first generation, yet the angel says it's evil. Hmm. Maybe the angel doesn't know about the logistics of societies. Uh, that's not entirely accurate. Fornication is limited to man and is defined as sex before marriage. Being married does not stop the procreation of the species. Thirdly, false witness. You've got to be kidding me. The world is full of examples where lying is a virtuous thing to do for the greater good. For instance, if someone says, are you hiding any Jews in your basement? Would you say, well, I can't lie to you because that would make me evil in God's eyes. So yeah, they're hiding in the basement. Feel free to ship them all off to the death camps. When it comes to bearing false witness, you gave an example, and there's actually one like that in the Bible. In Joshua 2, it tells of a lie that was told to protect the lives of two of Joshua's spies. And uh, it was actually celebrated for her faith in Hebrews 11.31, and for her works in James 2.25. Uh, while the Bible does not justify her lie, it does not condemn it. Fourth, theft. God would rather you starve and not be evil than have you steal from a corrupt man who has plenty. Yes, it's wrong to steal, even if you're starving. However, life here on Earth is finite, and in actuality it's a test of character. Fifth, blasphemy. Any statement of faith is blasphemy to another. So what's God saying in this Christian fantasy? That he wants no statements of faith? Christianity is not a religion, but the way, the truth, and the light. This video you make such strong strides to criticize is in no way a statement of faith. I believe that's obvious. It simply tries to answer questions people have with an open mind on the subject. If you made your mind up already, you're simply trying to find faults, and you always will, if you condition yourself that way. I hope you can honestly contemplate the subject with an open mind and seek God. I'd like to end this video with a Bible verse, Matthew 8, 7. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And the door is opened to everyone who knocks.